In this section of Retrospect, we're going to talk about the Activity Monitor. The Activity Monitor has several very important areas. The first section of the Activity Monitor is the Executing tab. In the Executing tab, it will display for us what disks are being backed up and the performance of those backups. Retrospect also has something called Multiple Drive Multiple Execution Capability. Essentially that means that Retrospect can back up multiple data streams simultaneously. Each item in the Executing tab represents an execution unit. When we look at an immediate backup, at the very bottom of the immediate backup, we have a pop-up menu, and it allows us to specify which execution unit we want that backup to use. Think of it as lanes on a highway. Execution unit 1 is the first lane, second lane, third lane, and fourth lane. You can't necessarily have two things occupying the same lane at the same time. So what you can do is you can schedule a backup to run at 10 p.m. to execution unit number one and a second backup to run to execution unit number two also at 10 p.m. The two will run in parallel as long as they're writing to different backup devices. If you set it to any execution unit, then what Retrospect will do is it will automatically look for an available execution unit and it will copy the data. This allows you also to load balance your backups. You can have short backups all scheduled to run on the same execution unit, while you might have a longer backup scheduled on a second execution unit writing to a totally different storage device. That way you can have simultaneous parallel backups of different data to different destinations. This allows you maximum efficiency so that you can get a large amount of data backed up in a single night. So we can see each individual execution unit and what's happening on each unit. In this particular case we have one execution unit running and it's running on execution unit number two. When we look at the log it'll show us information about that particular backup's progress. In the proactive tab we see proactive backup status information. So when we have a valid proactive backup script we can see what's there. So we go to automate proactive backup and we quickly create a new proactive backup script. Our source could be the C drive or it could be a specific folder or a series of folders. We choose a destination of our choice and just click OK. And then we can go up here to the run menu and say start proactive backup. And then it will appear in the proactive backup tab. Under the scheduled tab, Retrospect will display for us future scheduled backup events. So let's take a look at some scheduled backup events. First we'll stop proactive backup and we're going to go ahead and go to automate manage scripts and we'll quickly create a new script. Our source is drive C. Our destination is backups at A. We're going to tell it that we want to use execution unit number four. And we're going to schedule that and say add day of week. And we can say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And click OK at 10 p.m. And then we click OK to save the script. When we return to the activity monitor and go to the schedule tab, we can see all of the pending schedules. The waiting tab will show us backups that are waiting to run. Typically Retrospect will have an item waiting to run if there's another execution unit taking advantage or using that execution unit for that script. So if the pending script is waiting for execution unit number one, then that's what it's going to report. And when you go to executing, you're likely to see that there might be something already using that particular execution unit. The history tab shows us backup event history while the events tab shows us significant backup information. Error messages, it'll also show us successful backups and failed backups. This same information will also appear in your Windows event log.